Hello there, interwebs. In this episode, we're going to be looking over the groups as well as training and briefly touching on a couple of other things. But groups, pretty much as you see it here, exists in the game today. Only today we call it open mode instead of all players group, uh, private group, solo group. And this is kind of an interesting tidbit. It says uh, about alliances. And today we would call this feature wings. Most of what was the concepts behind this feature today exist as wings. It was that alliances would allow players to indicate trust so that they could fre freely jettison and pick up cargo between themselves. Eventually what they ended up doing is just giving you the abandon feature uh, so that you can abandon cargo and your friends could pick it up without it being marked as stolen. Uh, can fire upon each other without criminal implications. Again, that exists within the wing system. Gain the same criminal fine bounty if one or more members commits a crime. That does exist in the wing system. And it says this only occurs if the player is in the same vicinity. Again, that's pretty much how it works. You have to be within so many kilometers if one of your wingmen go rogue or one of your wingmen have turret lasers that decide to start pecking at a uh, police anaconda with its shields down or something like that. At any rate, uh, they have the ability to slave hyperdrive systems together to make travel easier. Yes, you can do that with way, uh, wingman navlock. Uh, get matched uh, as a group in matchmaking. Yes, it's how it's supposed to work. It doesn't always work. Uh, the networking code is still not fantastic, but it, it's certainly better than it was a couple of years ago. Uh, but that has its own ups and downs. Again, alliances in a private group would only meet other players in that private group. Now here's the interesting thing. Creating an alliance is handled exactly the same way as creating a private group, with the caveat that anyone who is in the group can invite other players, including non-friend players, into the alliance and no one is leader. This sounds eerily more like a guild system or a clan system or a fleet system or an org system or a corp system, whatever terminology you want to use for it than what we've actually ended up getting in terms of wings. Wings are always have always been temporary, uh, just for that session. Yet games, player organizations, and stuff do exist. Now, I understand where this comes from, and this is because Frontier got nothing but rage and hate from, I don't want to know if it's a significant number, but certainly a very vocal number of people on the forums over the development of this game that absolutely demanded that there be absolutely no player system, uh, no player guild clan system ever added to this game. And Frontier has appeased those people up until this point with a couple of caveats of they've added player... At one time they were adding player groups to the game uh, to have their own minor faction, and then you would manipulate that faction through the background sim, but again, I've made my comment or made my opinion known on the background sim repeatedly on how poorly implemented it's been and what a limited state that has been implemented in over the course of the past few years. Um, yeah, this is kind of interesting that they expected it to be a poorly designed system because, hey, anybody can allow anyone into the organization and then the only way to get rid of them is to vote to kick out an alliance member. Uh, I can tell you from being in clans, groups, guilds, whatever the hell you want to call them this day and age, over the course of the past 25 years online, this system would have been set up for failure. Uh, they would have to add positions and ranks to where you have leaders who can remove problem members without having to necessarily resort to an alliance vote. Because what happens if the bulk of your alliance over time goes inactive? Are you ever going to then be able to get enough votes in order to kick somebody out? There's some just logistical realities of having to run a player group or organization that would have to be met in order for any type of system like that to actually work. And I would like to see some sort of corporation guild system incorporated into the game. I haven't played with a player group since Test Mostly Harmless uh, basically imploded two years ago two and a half years ago. I think it was summer of 2015. It barely made it about five months after the release of the game. And that's because power play was a major factor in it. 
but probably the biggest factor is the fact that the group honestly kind of felt like there was no sense of agency within the group or within the game you could adopt a minor faction but what was the greater impact on the game world as a whole and I understand this mentality of oh yeah but you're just a lone pilot that's true but what if you and a hundred or a thousand other pilots are working together at that point shouldn't you start to have a little bit of an effect on the galaxy and the operations of its economy and things of that nature I think that this was a missed opportunity but again you even to this day if you mention on the forums we need guilds or clan system in the game which clans and guilds do exist and if we could have some sort of meaningful interaction with the galaxy through an event system or something like that that we've seen proposed elsewhere in this document I would sign up to join up with a new player group almost immediately but I will say I was in one of the very early massive PvP fleet battles. It was about the 20th of January 2015, about a month after release. And to this day, I remember that night, and it has stuck with me a year and a half, two years, two and a half years later. I still, whenever I think about Elite Dangerous, that event still comes to mind. And I will try to find that video on YouTube and link it down below. <sighs> what could have been? Um, I think back to the test mostly harmless guys this day and age. Um, Raytheon and Mac the Hunter. That that that's pretty much it. That that the, the three of us are all that is left of that group essentially. But there was others. Emperor's Grace uh, was another. So at any rate. Player's Log. Uh, today this is known as the Player's Journal. Uh, this was implemented as part of 2.2, I believe, and continues to receive updates. However, it says provide a place that players can quickly view and sort through their in-game achievements. There's no way to do this in the game. Okay? Okay. The player log exists as a external file in, in, in the directory. I believe it's a JSON file. It is not human readable, and it cannot be viewed within the game. In order to make heads or tails out of it, most people, you're going to need to download a third-party program in order to read that file and make heads or tails out of it. So, kind of. It's there. It's technically there. It logs all of these events and things. But it is not available to view within the game. Or even in the menu. It is impossible for you to go look at this file and parse it in a human readable format from within the game itself. Really. I mean, <laughs> crazy. And now we're going to get into a topic that be prepared for a fairly long rant, and this will probably turn this into a pretty long video. There's part of me that just wants to stop it here, but I'm just not going to do it. We're only at eight minutes. Trading. I've used this screen or one very close to it. Let's just talk about, let, let's, just, let's just take a look at what they were proposing for trading three years ago and what we've ended up using. Goals, simple to use. The actual mechanisms of trading should be easy for the player to grasp. The complexities in trading come from the choices that the player makes. Providing interesting choice. Trading should provide the player with interesting but understandable choices. Risk versus reward. Trading is a risk versus reward activity and it should provide the opportunity for players to balance risk with potential rewards. Impact the game world. Players' actions should have a noticeable effort on the game world. They enable player choices to determine fate, uh, the fate of aspects of the galaxy. Okay, simple to use. Trading is very simple to use. Provide an interesting choice. No, not really. It's kind of what's high at the, or what's low at this base, and what can I sell at a, a nearby or another base at a higher price and maximize profits. Risk versus reward. Uh, not really. As far as reward for a long time, it was the greatest reward with the least amount of risk. 
impact on the game world? <laughs> None. I've said this before in other videos. I will say it again. When the game was first released and we got in, first started getting into our big ships, the Type 9s and the Anacondas, we would go around and purposely crash trade routes and to see what their market effect would be. Well, what would happen is at 2 o'clock the next afternoon, at least local U.S. time, the economy of the station would reset itself as though we had done nothing. Didn't correct itself over time. It was just as though somebody ran what I call, a, or what I will call, a crime job or a scheduled task, and the game world just reset. There is also this idea. I think at one point, and I've mentioned it in numerous videos over the course of the past year, that this needs to be tied to the background system. And hey, now looking through this documentation, it's clear there's supposed to be an event system built into the BGS uh, that probably was supposed to create missions that are like community goals or mini community goals uh, without having uh, Frontier have to step in and do it manually each week during maintenance. It would be nice if there was a meaningful impact on the game world, if there was supply chains that had to be built uh, or built up, you know, that if you don't supply um, materials to a station, it doesn't produce as many widgets and what widgets it produces based is upon what the players bring. And maybe it is where the NPCs in the background supply it at a minimal level, but if you start supplying and bringing in more of those materials, guess what? It bumps up its production over the next few ticks. And then eventually it could lead to the building of more stations due to your activity in those systems by mining or trading or doing whatever it is that you're doing in those systems. If this existed in the game, you would find me part of a player group that was actively involved in these activities because there would be some sort of depth and meaning and agency and ownership within the game world for participating and doing this. But it doesn't exist. There is no impact. That's the problem. This is where trading has failed. Markets. Markets are where the majority of the trading takes place. Can be at space stations, very large ships, or other suitable structure. This has happened uh, very early on in 1.1, 1.2 days. Uh, there were ships about that were called seeking weapons or seeking luxuries. Uh, in fact, it was a very early exploit in the game to earn lots of credits very quickly. And they would be wanting things like, uh, well, seeking weapons would want different types of weapons. Seeking luxuries would want things like progenitor cells and other luxury items. And you would fly close to that ship and they would pay you and take out, uh, take the automatically uh, take the cargo out of your hold. You wouldn't have to dump cargo or anything like that. You just have to fly within two kilometers of them and they would pay you for it. I know not exactly super realistic or anything like that, but that did exist. And this day and age, uh, we have mega ships, which I think qualify as very large ships or any other suitable structure. We have planetary, space stations, outposts, uh, markets will come, space stations, shipyards. Um, okay, factories, specialist markets. We don't have any factories. Wouldn't it be awesome if they were, they were proposing factories? Holy crap, this is something that I did a video over about a year ago. I think uh, a year ago, November. So 10 months ago. That it would be nice if there was factories that required supply and demand. And again, this level of economic modeling in the game doesn't exist. It was clearly in the plans for these things. Uh, pirate basis, ignore fines and bounties, commodities, trades, illegal commodities, uh, requires a contact to locate. No, you pretty much can go in and pirate bases do exist. They're usually outpost and they'll have the pirate little holographic symbol on the outside of them. You just go there and dock. Uh, but wouldn't that be really cool? Same thing with smuggler bases. Ignore fines, but not bounties, trades commodities and illegal commodities, requires a contact for location. Gee, wouldn't it be cool for smuggling and piracy? Again, these are two aspects of career and game choices that 
have very limited appeal right now because they're very shallowly developed. And I would say at this point, not even really developed and never have really have been. The missions are there, but the fact that there's not any type of reward. Now imagine that you go into Sun Tzu Jet Systems, and which is a pirate faction, and you gain a reputation with them, and then they tell you where their secret pirate base is in a neighboring system, in an asteroid base. Maybe it is one of these asteroid bases uh, that have propped up in 2.3. Same thing with smuggler bases. My gosh, you get reward with this information for interacting with the game world, and again, you would start to have a in-world connection to these pirate or smuggling factions in order to get these missions and other things like that. Wow, meaningful gameplay and reward-based gameplay giving an impact not only to your experience in the game world, but possibly the game world itself. Because maybe you could smuggle in these supplies to destabilize systems and other powers or other factions. Uh, the display in the market is determined by legality, profile, uh, supply and demand. Well, stations do have a supply demand, but... It can be manipulated, but very, very short time. Uh, you'll normally see this most impactful at community goals, in particular trade community goals, where if there's three commodities that are needed for that uh, goal, if you go to the nearest three or four systems that have them, uh, you'll notice that within a day or so they are depleted in terms of sources. Give them about another day, though, those supply levels would return to whatever their normal value is supposed to be. So again, lack of impact on the game world. Uh, players can attempt to change the price offered price for buy or sell by contacting a dealer in a specific good. This can also mean the supplier demand values can be exceeded. No, nope, none of this was here. Markets will have different modifiers and market values. That does exist in the game uh, to a certain to a limited extent. It's gotten a little bit better, I think, over time. Uh, some markets will indicate a specialist in some way. These usually means the availability of rare items. Uh, there's a lot of rare goods in the game now. There wasn't so much a couple of years ago, but rare trading was a big deal. It was a good money marker, money maker back in the day. But there's no way that you, there, there's no method of haggling in the game. It is the price of the price, and you you sell it. You don't have the option of uh, building up reputation with these dealers or specialists or whatever they may be in order to gain better prices or negotiate. It, it would kind of be cool if it would. Uh, using the negotiation changes the price by a value derived from the trading reputation as well, as long as the amount is worth their while. This will be a settable, uh, yeah, settable value, probably if over 50% of the market demand. So, Wow, there, there, there was supposed to be a lot more depth in terms of trading, except for, oh, buy here, fly there, sell. There, there was supposed to be some more options here. Uh, marked data content, historical data, will be aggregated, or market data content. No, there's, the, there's no history. Uh, I don't know if it's necessary. Yeah, here it is. The price volatility of this particular commodity at that station over time. Where is this? This would be freaking awesome. I can understand it not being there at first because, you know, you kind of need data before you you can do this, but full price data for a limited time. So what this would be, I guess, is uh, an, an aggregate for full timeline. So maybe the full price data for the past 72 hours. And then you would see an aggregate to where maybe you could pull down what's the price been like for the past week, month, year, uh, past three years, whatever it may be. Players can cancel a trade before leading the trading screen. Yeah, that's true. Uh, players can dump cargo at a step substantially reduced value if it cannot be sold through the market normally. Uh, this is not true. A station will take your goods. They will just pay you a very, very low price for it if they don't want it. Uh, Jettisoning cargo within a defined station of a uh, distance of a station is illegal. Uh, some dangerous cargoes may need a fee to offload. Uh, there are things like toxic waste in the game. Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't it be cool if you needed bio or a fee to unload bio waste? 
commodities. Each commodity has a baseline price. This is the starting price for the commodity at this market. The value is modified by the background simulation. No, it's not. Nope. I'm sorry. Very limited effect. Uh, this value is modified by tr player trading. Very limited effect. It may be changed for a few hours or a few days in the case of a nearby trading community goal. Buying and selling price is modified by the quantity of a commodity being traded. Um, maybe a little bit. Repeated sales of the same commodity by the same player in the same market will be blocked. Um, no, not really. Uh, there are caps on prices to prevent unrealistic extreme, uh, extremes, no negative values. So, acts like an, uh, a Keynesian actor, essentially. I don't know if that exists or not. Basically, whenever a trade commodity community goal happens, they have to set the pro, uh, the uh, demand up to nine 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 or or nine 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 nine. And I'm not saying German for no. Uh, let's see here, freight missions. Okay, those do exist. And detail in a future topic. Although a reasonable spread of missions will always be available, that is, uh, market to determine a market's appropriate for the background simulation, take into account the, the system data, agricultural, food supply, demands, all of that good stuff, politics, laws. Yes, this all does kind of exist into the game. Market data availability when all doc uh, is available may be modified by ranking. When in system, market prices are available. No, they're not. Wouldn't it be nice if we could go scan a nav buoy and then get the market prices for the different stations? Outside the system, only general information is available. Uh, that is available on the uh, galaxy map if you've purchased trade data. Uh, player's trade history is available in detail. No, it's not. Uh, well, it kind of sort of, I guess, is now with the player journal, but uh, not from within the game. Wouldn't it be nice? Well, hmm. I guess it is available in the system in your statistics menu, but only at aggregate levels. How much have you bought, sold, and how many markets have you bought and sold at? Uh, need feed provides, uh, new feed, news feeds produce useful economic or provide useful economic data for all systems. No, they don't. <laughs> Not really. Um, yeah. Oh, commodities require specialist ship equipment. Uh, spoiling commodity is ruined. Alteration, the commodity changes type. Contamination, no, this doesn't exist. Wouldn't it be cool if it did? Alteration, and that doesn't exist, as far as I know. Contamination, that doesn't exist. Packets of information can be obtained on traded like commodities. Maybe. Tradable information includes system locations, okay, that does exist. Resource gathering locations. Uh, no, not really. Mission event locations. Yeah, that does exist. Information packets automatically update the player's galactic map as needed as they are acquired. Yeah, okay, the di trade data, that's true. Using a purchase packet means it cannot then be resold. Um, I don't think it really works that way. Player to player trading. Players can trade directly with each other. Well, yeah, I guess we can. The player trade interface is available when both players are docked at the same market. Oh, wait, no, we can't. The player trade interface is available when two players dock ships. Only we can't dock ships. Now, player-to-player -player trading can exist and does exist in the game. There are people out there that trade materials for, let's say, gold or palladium or other things that can be traded for credits. And you do this via the abandoning or jettison of cargo from your cargo racks, and the other player scoops it up. Uh, the player trade interface is a secure swap allowing players to transfer credits and cargo. No, we can't. Oh my gosh, could you imagine the difference that this would make in the game if we actually could trade cargo and resources and stuff like this 
in the game for credits or cargo or what have you from a screen if we're just both docked at the same station. Now, they never included this feature, and the reason that they often cited has been they don't want gold farmers to come around and offer cash in or um, currency in game for real world cash transactions. I somewhat understand that, but at the same time, wow, this is something that a lot of people have asked for, and look, it was in the plan. Uh, both players must accept the trade before it occurs, except it must be written done by both, uh, by both parties after, the change, after any change in the trade. Uh, trading occurs in real time and cannot be interrupted, example by being attacked unless taking a place uh, at a sp uh, space dock. Either player can cancel the trade at any time, up until the point that they both agree. Holy crap. <laughs> I mean, you, you compared this trading system compared to what's been delivered? Wow. If this is what they fleshed out over the course of the next year, or the coming year, Elite Dangerous becomes a very, very different game. A much more fun, entertaining, and enjoyable game, if you ask me. But that's if you ask me. This one's at about 25 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here. And let me know uh, what do you think about these kind of revelations. I mean, if, if, if you looked at this and looked at this was the trading system that you expected versus what's in the actual game, let me know in the comments section down below. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, all of those fun things. And I will see you in the next video.